מיכל גליות! I recently met the parents of an eight-year-old boy. They told me that in the past year, whenever the son is unhappy with something or he's being told no, he reacts aggressively. They also told me that he used to be a perfect, easy-going, happy and cooperative little boy, and that the past year was filled with many changes. His little sister, began defying him as he started to grow up. They moved house. He started elementary school. His mother had a very difficult pregnancy until she finally gave birth to healthy twin girls. But slowly and surely, he began to behave badly. They fight with him every day. He's frustrated, and he kicks the furniture. His mother is mad at him. His father is disappointed in him. And his sister is constantly being bullied by him. So his parents, like you and me, understand what's going on. And they understand that he had a very difficult year. He's sad. He's jealous. He's worried. He thinks that he's losing his mother, so he has all the reasons to behave badly. And when the parents came to my clinic to seek my advice, they were not only worried, but they felt helpless. They understand why the son behaves the way he does, but they, does, they don't know what to do to help him. Like millions, of other parents, they've missed a very important point. Because what happens when the son behaves the way he does? His mother comes to the room, explaining, begging, shouting, threatening. Then the father comes to the room, try to calm things down. And even if he succeeds and the boy is calmed down, 10 minutes after that, he starts all over again, shouting, kicking. Enter the parents once again, and so on and so forth. You get the picture. So, what the parents, like you, like many other parents, are missing is the point that instead of asking why the child behaved the way he does, what they should be talking about is what for. What is the son trying to achieve by behaving this, will, this way? What are his goals by acting that way? Because when we will understand children's goals and objectives, we will be much polite and effective, much more polite and effective in our responses. I'll give you an example. Imagine a child sitting on his little chair next to his little table, playing by himself very busy focusing in what he's doing. His mother calls him, but he doesn't even hear her. And he goes on playing. Then the mother goes about her business, too, and she decides to pick up the, po the phone and call a friend. Not seconds passed, not minutes, but seconds passed, and the boy comes running up to her. The same boy that just a minute ago was so disinterested in her because he was so preoccupied, now comes running up to her, and he says, Mom, Mom, I'm something, I have something very important to tell you. So the mother looks at him and says, just a minute, I'm on the phone. But the boy repeats, but mother, please, please, it is very important, but I'm on the phone, says the mother. Wait a minute, let me finish 
the conversation. And the boy says, but then I will forget. No, you won't, said the mother. I'll remind you. Stop nagging. But the boy doesn't stop. And he goes on talking to the mother and nagging and please and mom and pay attention and it's important and the mother is going to explode. Eventually, she shouted at him, what did you want to tell me? So the child looks at her and says, um, 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 uh, I forgot and it's your blame that I forgot it. Well, it's always our blame, isn't it? Or he makes up a story and tells her something which she hears and she doesn't really listen to. Then the child is, to is told off and he goes back to his room to play by himself. You may ask, why does this happen every day again and again? Is it because the mother is busy taking care of the young siblings and he's jealous and he wants her attention? Maybe. So now we know why he behaves the way he does. But then what? Should I tell the mother not to take care of the children? Or not to talk on the phone when the child is home? Understand that even if we know what the ch why children behave the way they do, it doesn't bring us any closer to the solution because this is the reality. Parents are busy, children need to be taken care of, and we, from time to time, want to or need to make a telephone call. What the child really wanted is something else. And in order to understand what children need and want, we have to take, we have to think, like little, like little children. Humor me for a minute, and let me take you on a journey into the hearts and souls of little kids. What do children want? in addition to love and a sense of security, in addition to ice cream and theme parks, they want to feel that they belong. They want to know that they are a part of the community in which they live, their family, their class. They want to have a sense of belonging. And for that to happen, they must feel that they are seen, and they must feel that they are able. When we adults react and respond to the children's behavior, we are, in fact, feeding and reinforcing the children's goals. We see them. We make them feel that they are able. When the mother is repeatedly answer the child, hence being seen. Mom is looking at me, and she's talking to me. And when the mother is losing control, losing uh, her temper, and then she lost control over herself and over the child, hence being able, I can make my mother lose control. Children will be willing to suffer slightly. You know what? They will be willing to suffer a lot if to satisfy, if they can satisfy, their needs. So those goals of being seen and being able that feeds the necessity of children to belong, to feel that they belong, those goals are important and necessary. It's the strategy that is wrong. So, what can be done? How can we help children change their behavior? First, by understanding 
that we have to look at ourselves. We have to realize how we respond to children, and in this response, in, the, in those ways that we react towards them, we are actually feeding the continuous of they behave. Now, we don't ignore children. Children should not be ignored. Even if they misbehaved, we can ignore a behavior, but not the child. So when you're on the phone and your child comes to you and nag, look at him, smile at him, put your hand on his shoulder, but don't answer him. That way, you react to the child's presence, but not to their behave. And most importantly, and something else that we can do, is in the positive way. Fulfill your children's need of being seen and being able in positive ways. Put on your rose-colored glasses and start complimenting your children when they are well-behaved, without exaggerating and without lying, even once a day or every other day. And don't say empty phrases like, good job. No. Say words like, I saw you were generous, responsible, patient. I saw you gave in, or you did not give in. When we do that, Children won't need to behave badly in order to feel those feelings, those needs of being seen and being able. So, next time that your child is rude to you or saying no, uh, when he kicks the cupboard or doesn't answer you when you call him, Pay attention to your reaction. Try to understand how your reaction fulfills the children's goals and aims of being seen and being able. And then, one, understand that they're not doing it to defy you. They're doing it to help themselves, but going about it the wrong way. Then two, don't feed those bad behaviors by your automatic and repetitive reactions. And three, fulfill the needs when they're well behaved. So, next time you ask yourself, why? Think about what for instead. Thank you. Thank you.